Hello, we are on Sharp Neck Competence Days 2024 and we are celebrating the 30 years of the brand Sharp NEC. And I have here in our mobile studio, Kanawa VIT, special guest from brand Sharp NEC. Could you introduce yourself, please? Yeah, hello. My name is Gerd Kaiser. I'm the product manager for installation projectors and digital cinema projectors in Sharp NEC Europe. Gerd, you have worked for Sharp NEC in Germany for about 30 years. Uh, it's more than 30 years, meanwhile, almost 35. Very unusual, I know, but it's a great company. How do you remember the journey for the brand? Yeah, I started uh, in the beginning as a trainer in Sharp NEC. After I was studying uh, electronics, I came to, to NEC, formerly NEC at this time, and did the technical trainings for printers in the beginning, then for all the monitors, and finally for projectors. The finally for the projectors is the special place where you have been for about 20 years. Yes, this is correct, because I like projectors and the technology changed so often meanwhile and it's always very exciting and very interesting that I was staying there. Could you say some words about the um, developing of the sector of projectors? in Sharp NEC brand. Yeah. And this time, as I said, it was NEC. And we got the first small LCD projector. Now it sounds not so very exciting, but it was exciting because if you remember at this time frame, it was not usual to have a projector and a large image anywhere. You had just a monitor. And this means presenting any result of any study or whatever was not so easy. Everybody needed a monitor and had to look on that uh, for seeing the picture. And then when the first projector projectors came out, all the universities and the schools, the higher schools and all the companies were happy to present their, their results and their, their stuff on a large picture on the wall. And this was the first LCD projector, mobile, not so mobile than today, and not so bright. At the beginning it was just 500, 800, 1000 lumen, and the resolution was XJ, but it was a projector and you could see the picture on your wall. And then it uh, developed, this means uh, the brightness increased year by year, the resolution increased to wide XJ, then finally wide UXJ, but nothing happened so special anymore. And then the, the next step was we uh, introduced, I don't remember when it was, it was about 2000, the first uh, mirror, uh, lensless mirror, mirror projector. And this was very a special. Yes, it was very, very special. At this time, it was especially special because nobody had that before and there was no lens built in. And I remember exactly when I came to Japan and they showed me, ah, have a look on that. We have a great new product. What do you think? And then I was really, really surprised about that because no lens, just a very special form mirror. And the benefit was that you uh, uh, had a picture, a, a large picture, and very small distance. This means the first uh, ultra short throw projector was born. And we were ahead about two or three years before competition. And then it came to the common usage, and uh, all of them developed that. But we were really the first one. At this time, it was extremely expensive and very, very special. Expensive without lens? Yeah, because there was no lens. The mirror was, was the very, very uh, expensive part of that because it was a special formed mirror and I believe it was really, really pretty complicated for any complicated to manufacture that and that was the reason for that. And then the, the bright projectors increased and there were a lot of LCD models on the market then for, for really higher brightness and then we came up with the first 3 DLP projector. I remember also that and it was amazing. This was 3,500 lumens SVGA and the size was like a table table and the height about, no, I don't remember exactly, 30, 40 centimeters, this means really huge thing. And then um, the 3DLP era began for rental staging. This means we were initiating that in the rental staging area with our 3DLP and then 6,500, 8,000 followed, XGA resolution followed and then in in increased, increased and increased. And next? Digital cinema came up. And uh, most of you remember the old film area. This means that the, the, the 
the, the operators in the cinema had really to cut the movies and insert some advertising or whatever. It was a lot of work and very complicated. And then digital cinema came up, first lamp projectors, and then it was more or less common technology. And the next step was that laser came in and we uh, introduced there the first laser projector for digital cinema. It was also really exciting there and a brand new technology. Everybody was surprised, no lamps anymore and every, everything will be much more easy. And then it, it went uh, ahead and the, then the laser projector, first just blue laser, then competition started to have RGB lasers. We followed that and found out very quickly that RGB is not the best technology for digital cinema because if you are using green laser, you have a lot of so-called speckle in the, the picture. This is a kind of sparkling of the, of the green laser light source. And then we decided to go with the RB laser. This means just a red and a blue laser and green is coming from phosphor. And then everything was solved. The RB laser was lower in cost, had a much better picture and you can use higher gain screens for that. This means no, no speckle at all and best quality. And this was the next step. And then, yeah, one additional step or between step was also getting a UHP lamp projector into digital cinema because in the beginning everything was scene and based and we invited the first UHP lamp projector and this was, I heard from the industry, the, 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 the most uh, used projector or board projector in the world. This means it was the most successful projector ever that had been uh, introduced to digital cinema. We alone in, in Europe sold about uh, almost 3000 units of that for digital cinema. And it's still alive and still great. And today, what, what is your unique examples of projectors, which could you explain now for us? Yeah, we introduced the first filterless LCD projector to the industry. This was also some years ago. Meanwhile, that means we are now in the first generation, uh, improved and improved that always. And up to 10,000 lumen, we are still unique. Over 10,000 lumen, we are almost unique. <laughs> but as I said, in the fourth generation, we are still unique. And uh, the benefit is that it is a completely sealed engine in the projector box. No dust can come in, can ever touch the panels, and therefore the quality of the panels is stable for many, many years. And, of course, you don't need any filter. And the noise level is also lower because the noise is keeping in this, this sealed engine box. And this is still very, very unique. And we are using that now from 5,000 lumen to 20,000 lumen with, with really uh, great success. Stable and for many, many years. Yes. This is the idea of Sharp NEC. Exactly. This is always reflected by, by, by Sharp NEC. Stable products, stable quality and uh, stable employees. And what will be the future? If you think about the projectors, the projectors, projectors journey, which you know uh, for about 20, 30 years, what will be the future for this sector? The, the technology improvement is slowing down now a little bit. Why? Because the quality is so great now that it's almost impossible to improve that. The only thing is the brightness level. This means brightness is going up because pro uh, projector business is still increasing in the, for the bright pictures, for the large pictures, because this is the easiest and also the cheapest way to create a large picture by a projector. And therefore the brightness, the higher brightness levels are growing. And uh, the other thing is the resolution. This means wide UXJ is changing now to 4K and, and 4K is increasing in future. And we can see much more 4K models now. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And you, viewers who are watching us on channel Kanal FAYT on YouTube, remember there are more and more interviews, not only about Sharpneck Competence Days. Bye.